Hello, confirmation students and parents and others who might be in the room. I welcome you to confirmation class on this day. Um, this is the last lesson that I was scheduled to teach for the school year. It is about Lutheran worship practices. Um, it should have been taught in class a few weeks ago, but as the pandemic has changed all of our lives, it has also changed our schedule a bit. So as we um, come together tonight, at least virtually, um, we look at Lutheran worship practices. All of you have been a part of a Lutheran church for a while. You have been in worship, and this may help to explain a few things to you, at least the background of why we do some of what we do. And so tonight, today, um, whenever it is you're looking at this, we explore some of our Lutheran worship practices. We begin with our opening prayer, and I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see the group response, so I will do both, and if you choose, you can join in with the group time. Let us pray. God, you give us the peace that surpasses all understanding. Help us to share that peace with others. God, you bless us with many gifts. Help us to return the favor by giving to those in need. God, you are with us every day of our life. Help us to trust your presence. God, you give us voices to sing your praises. Help us to make a joyful noise and worship you. God, your grace blesses our lives. Help us to be a blessing to others. Amen. Today's story. Our uh, lesson focus is in worship. God calls us, restores us to wholeness, and sends us out to serve others and the world. And our big question: Why should we want to go to practice, or why should we want to go to worship every week? Because we should. Our key words for today, worship. The definition of worship is literally giving praise and adoration to God, particularly in the presence of other Christians. That means we gather for worship, not to just be bored by my sermon, um, but because we are there to worship God. Worship is all about God. It is not about ourselves. And so we come together to remember the one who created us and who brings us together and unites us. Our next word, practice. A ritual that is commonly carried out in worship. Quite often we talk about these as being traditions. These are things that we do on a regular basis. These are quite often things that have great meaning to us as we gather as a congregation. Benediction. A blessing that is typically, typically given by the pastor at the end of the worship service. It is a blessing. It is a God is blessing you to go out and to be a blessing to others. When our worship ends, it is time for us to remember to go out and to carry on what we've learned in worship out into the world. And finally, offering. It is a gift freely given out of devotion to God. Offerings include money, abilities, and time. Quite often when we think about offering, we only think about passing the offering plate and um, the envelopes and the money, the dollar bills and the coins that are put in there. But offering is so much more. Our offering is giving back to God, literally a part of what God has given to us. We have been blessed with so much. And our response is to give some of that back. It's not just about the church asking for money. It's about sharing what we have, sharing our 
finances, sharing our gifts, sharing our abilities, sharing our time, our talent, sharing so much of who we are and what we are to let other people know about God and about God's presence in our lives. And the things that we use the finances and our gifts and our time for are sharing with others, are helping other people. Um, we do so much as Bayview Lutheran Church, and I'm sure as Haynesville and Tonham Forest, we support other groups in our community like Loaves and Fishes, um, so many groups that use our buildings, that use the food that we bring together. Um, we have the tree at Christmas time at, that helps us to share what we have with others to give gifts to other people. There are so many things that we do with our offerings that it's not just about passing the offering plate on Sunday morning, but offering is about sharing who we are and being a blessing to others. We need to remember this because quite often adults even forget about that and they think that the church is only asking for money, but that's not true. We're asking you to share what you have with others because that is what God has asked us to do. So today's story again, our big question, why should we want to go and worship every week? Right now, that's a really interesting question because we literally legally cannot go and worship. We can watch the worship service, which I record here, right here in my studio, which is known as my craft room or an extra guest bedroom in my house. Um, it's, it's about so much more. It's about remembering God and God, the one who has created us and who has blessed us in so many ways. We come together in worship to say thank you. We gather as a community because we are a family. Deacon Donna reminds us of that all the time. We are a family and we come together as God's family in this place, in whatever place we gather, even virtually, online, we gather as God's family. And the reason is because in worship, God calls us. God calls us to come together. God restores us. God gives us energy and information and good feelings and direction in life. And God restores us to wholeness. Sometimes when people come together, they are broken. They feel very broken. And they need to come together as a community to find wholeness and healing because we do that as a family of God. And then we are sent out at the end of worship always to serve other people. So we open our Bibles. You don't actually have to open your Bible right now because our passages for tonight are very short. So I just printed them on the screen. And our first passage is from Exodus, which is in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus. So the second book of the Bible. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. This is part of the story that you probably remember from Sunday school, where the Israelites had been held as slaves, as captives in Egypt for a number of years. Over 600,000 of them were held as slaves. And these are some of the very people who helped to build the pyramids and to um, help make Egypt such an important and vital uh, country for thousands of years. And God sends Moses into Egypt and says, let my people go. Help get my people out of there. And so God sends Moses to Pharaoh, who was the like king of Egypt, and says, 
make sure Pharaoh lets them go so that they can worship me. As they were held as slaves, they were not able to worship the way that they wanted to, the way they needed to. And so a big reason of why God wants them to be set free is so that they can freely worship God. That's how important worship is. Since the beginning of time, we gather for worship to remember who God is and what God means in our lives. Our second reading comes from Colossians, which is part of the New Testament. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. There is so much here to unpack about worship. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. When we come together, we are reminded of the peace of Christ, which is a part of our hearts. Like I I said before, sometimes we gather and we feel broken. But when we gather together quite often, the peace of Christ enters our hearts and reminds us that things will be okay. And so when we gather for worship, we find peace just in gathering. And be thankful. So often we are so busy, maybe not now so much, but so often we are so busy running from one activity to another that we don't hardly have time for anything. And we don't pause and think about the many, many ways that we should be thankful for family and friends and food and our phones and the internet and TikTok and whatever it is, but be thankful for those things that bring us together and that remind us that we are loved by God and that there are many things for us to be thankful for. And let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let God's words enter your hearts and direct you as you live out your life every day. And with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. It amazes me that quite often the only time we do this is in worship. It's the only time we gather as God's people and sing together. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I will have a song that gets stuck in my head. And quite often, the words of that song touch my heart deeply. And so when that song is one that praises God, I am especially blessed on that day. And do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father for him. Everything that we do, all our words that we say, all of our deeds that we do, all of the prayers that we lift up, We do so because of Jesus Christ and because of what he has taught us about faith and about God. And so everything we do, we need to be mindful to do it in the name of God and remembering Jesus in our lives. So, in particular, our Lutheran worship practices. All right, so we are reminded that in worship, 
or that worship is actually a central part of our lives. At least it should be a central part of our lives. It's not something that we only do on Easter and Christmas. It's not something that we do once a week. It's not something that we do once a month. It is something that should be central to our lives. Because when we gather together as God's people, we are reminded how united, how unified we are because of the body of Christ. And secondly, it unites us in celebration. When we come together for worship, it is a celebration. It is a time to get together with our family and friends and to celebrate in worship. And it causes us to think about life and faith. How does our faith inform our lives? How do we live our lives because of what we know about Jesus? Back probably 20 years ago, there was a campaign, What Would Jesus Do? And you saw it on t-shirts and on bracelets and on billboards and wherever you were looking, it seemed that you would see WWJD. What would Jesus do? And that was a reminder of stop and think in this situation, what would Jesus do? And then do what Jesus would do. Do what Jesus would call us to do. So worship reminds us to stop and to think before we just react to something and to try and do what Jesus would want us to do. Next, we are reminded that worship helps us to grow in faith. When we gather together, we learn more about our faith. We hear um, passages from the Bible. We hear in the sermon um, some very modern day ways in which we can apply what we learn in Scripture. So part of what it means to gather for worship is to grow in our faith. Also, worship grounds us in our Christian roots and in our Lutheran roots while still addressing what's going on in the world today. We are first and foremost Christians. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And secondly, we are Lutherans. And so we follow what the Lutheran Church has taught. We follow what Martin Luther taught and what he came up with 500 years ago. And then we use those foundations of the Christian faith and what Martin Luther has taught us to live out our faith today, to address the issues that we see of people who are hungry, people who are homeless, people who are losing their jobs, people who are depressed, people who are in whatever need there is. How can we address those based on what we know, what we have learned about our faith as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, and as a Lutheran? So, four basic parts of the Lutheran worship service. First, our gathering, literally getting together. That first part of worship, just getting together, sharing the peace, greeting one another, all of that is a vitally important part of our Lutheran worship service. Gathering means getting together in our community to literally just be together, to talk about God and to worship God together. That is one of the things that we are missing most right now, is actually physically being together. We can Skype, we can um, FaceTime, we can Zoom, we can do all of that virtually. We can talk on the phone, we can text one another, but it's not the same. This is the part that we are missing the most, is actually physically being together with our family of faith so that we can talk together and support one another in person. The second part of Lutheran worship is the word. 
the words of worship are sacred. Quite often they come directly from the Bible. They are found in our prayers, in our hymns, in our songs, in scripture, in the sermon, in the creeds, etc. And all of them remind us about God. The word in our life, the word of scripture, the word of Jesus Christ. So vitally important. That's why we find it sprinkled all the way through our worship service. If you pay attention, each Sunday there is a theme and it will run throughout the liturgy, throughout the words we say in the prayers, throughout the Apostles' Creed, throughout everything. And all of it is based on the Word, on Bible, on Scripture, on the teachings of God and Jesus Christ. And we continue on. The third part is the sacrament, Holy Communion, and Baptism. Those are the two sacraments that we recognize in the Lutheran Church. And Jesus' command is to... Do these things in remembrance of me. Jesus took very common elements and made them sacred. In baptism, Jesus took water. And when we, are, uh, when we have a baptism, we take water and put it usually on the baby's head. I've, I have baptized a few adults, but usually it's on a baby or a young child. We take water, something so very common, put it on their head and remind them that their sins are washed away. In the very act of baptism. So when we gather for worship, and this is why we almost like 99.9% of the time do wor- do um, baptisms in worship is because it is a important part of worship together. There are a few cases where you need to do an emergency baptism in a hospital because the baby is very ill. Um, but ninety nine point nine percent of the time in the Lutheran Church, we do baptisms in worship because it's a part an important part of our roll together as a community of faith. The other thing, Holy Communion, which at Bayview, um, we do pretty much every Sunday, every time we gather for worship. I know at Haynesville, it is not done quite as often. And at Tonham, I think it is done every time you worship also, but I'm not completely sure about that. Um, But to gather together for the Lord's Supper, for Holy Communion. Again, two very common elements, bread and wine. These are things that in Jesus' day, every family had for every meal, bread and wine. And what Jesus did was take these very common elements and made them sacred. The bread. This is my body, Jesus said. Take this in remembrance of me, the cup of wine. This is my blood. Take this in remembrance of me. When we gather for worship, this is a, another important part because it reminds us of our connection with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the sacrifice he made by sacrificing, by dying on the cross to give up his body and his blood to forgive all of us of our sin. And the fourth part, sending. Well, that sounds pretty simple. Sending, go out of here, leave. That's literally what it means. But it's also an important part of worship because we are blessed. There is a blessing at the end of the worship service. Go and do likewise. Go and share the peace of Christ. Go and feed the poor. Go and help one another. Go and tell the story. All of those things. It is go from here. Go from this place. Go from worship. And to continue to share your faith 
with other people. It sounds like it's pretty simple, but it is really an important part of who we are as Lutherans. So I'm going to end this now. There will be a second part to this lesson in a second video. Um, but as we end our time, I want you, since you can't break up into your small groups, I want you to talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, talk to whoever it is that is in the room with you right now and discuss a couple of questions. The first one, what is your favorite or most meaningful part of worship? Your favorite or your most meaningful part of worship. And second, why are you a part of your Lutheran church? And how long have you been there? Why are you a member at Bayview or Tonham Forest or Haynesville? What brought you to this place? How long have you been there? And why is it important? So take some time, discuss these things, and then join me again in part two of our lesson.